Today we're gonna to show you how to make a keto friendly pizza, also known as a meatza. On this channel, we've shown you the other way that we usually make pizza. We usually take low carb tortillas, fry them up in olive oil, and then put our pizza toppings on them and put them in the oven for a couple minutes. But a lot of you have been trying to cut back on the low carb tortillas. We know how you feel. We've also been trying to cut back on them a little bit. About a month ago, we published a video in which we showed you what we ate in a day. And one of those was the pizza that we usually order from a place around here in Chicago called Lumonati's. That pizza is made with an Italian sausage crust. And a lot of you were asking, can you show us how to make that kind of pizza? And so today that's the kind of pizza that we're going to be making for you, for us. And you're going to watch us make it. Sarah and her husband have made this pizza before. And so I, this is my first time rolling out the meat crust. Um, so we're going to learn together, I guess. It doesn't seem that difficult. So the only thing that you have to know is that the crust is going to shrink substantially. So you have to roll it out as much as you can, as thin as you can, because it's going to retract when it cooks. This is the kind of um, Italian sausage that we're using. We're using the mild one, but you could also use the spicy Italian sausage. You want to get the one that's already ground. We also bought some Dietz and Watson pepperoni, some low moisture mozzarella, some Rao's pizza sauce, which is really low in carbs. And we have some parchment sheets and some cling wrap. And we also have some fresh basil. Those are the ingredients that we're going to be using today. You could use all different types of pizza toppings. If you wanted to use chicken and barbecue sauce and mozzarella and cilantro, that would be great. And if you don't like sausage, I think that you can use ground chicken, add some spices in there, and then pretty much do the same technique. It should work the same. We're gonna probably try that too at some point because half of you asked for this type and the other half of you asked for the chicken type. So we'll probably be making a video about both, maybe even comparing them at some point. So the first step is to lay down a piece of parchment paper. We use these pre-cut sheets. And then we're gonna put another piece of parchment paper on top of the sausage. And then you're going to roll it out. And since I forgot my rolling pin today and Sarah doesn't own one, I'm going to be using this oddly shaped water, I don't even know what it's called. Water bottle. Water bottle. That's not important. The important part is that you're gonna to wanna to roll it as thin as possible. If you see holes in it, it's not that big of a deal because you can kind of pinch it together before you start cooking it. Just try to get it really, really thin. going with an organic rustic shape for our pizza because let's be honest this is not a pizza that you're going to be grabbing with your hands and eating it you're going to be using a fork and knife it doesn't matter it doesn't even really matter if it's bigger than the pan that you're going to put it in because as it cooks it's going to shrink and fall into the pan pretty much so this is the way it's turning out so we have it nice and thin and we're going to be putting it into our pan so it starts to cook we're also going to brown it on both sides Honestly, if there was one caveat or thing that I had to complain about, about the Lumonati's famous uh, meat -za pizza, it's that it's kind of like really thick. One side of it might be crispy, but the other side is just kind of like steamed sausage. And so we are going to be cooking it on both sides to give it that nice crispiness. Yeah, it's not hard. Put your hand under it. You can do it. I believe in you. This no. is dumb. It's not dumb. It's going to work. It's going to stick. Why don't I put this on top of that? No, just... You can do that if you want. Yeah, you can do that if you want. It's that's hot. hot. Right. Oh my God, it's not hard. It's gonna stick to it. Have you ever seen people flip a thing into a... a no, I don't do that. I don't... Okay, be careful. This is why I wanted you to do this part. Okay. Yep. Yeah, see? Walk away. I told you it wasn't hard. You just need to be confident when you do it. Confidence okay. is key. We have a little hole here. We're just gonna pinch, pinch it together. Okay. It's going to start shrinking now. And if it breaks, then when you're flipping it, then it's okay. You cannot expect it to be dough. It is meat. And you know what makes perfect glue? Cheese. So just put cheese on it and it will glue it all back together. We're all gonna cook this on medium to medium high for like five minutes. And then we're gonna flip it in theory and cook it for another five minutes. It's already shrinking, as you can see. We were at the edge of the pan. We're moving towards the middle of the pan. I'm excited. I'm hungry. So it's been a couple minutes. I'm just gonna take a sneak peek and to see if we're gonna get some of that crunchy, kind of brown sausage crust. So it's starting there. So we're gonna leave it for like one more minute and then we're gonna flip this thing. 
Okay, so Emily got really nervous and didn't want to flip it. So I guess I have to do it. There's no graceful way to do this. And please be careful because there's a lot of oil still in the pan. And remember that it's okay if it cracks because we're gonna be putting toppings on it. You're not even gonna notice it. You're not eating this with your hands. You're going to be using a fork and a knife. So let's flip this beast. So my plan is to take the sausage crust and move it over to a plate first. And then we're going to try to flip it like that. Okay, so we got it into our plate. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a spatula. Is this a spatula? What? There's oil, be careful. A spatula, and I'm gonna use that to kind of, as a guide to flip this into the pan. So Emily, make sure to get this on camera. Not too close, I don't wanna splatter um, grease onto my lens. But ready? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we got it into the pan. We're gonna brown it on this side and then we're gonna put it on a sheet pan and we're gonna finish the rest of it. I could see oil on my lens, so anyway. Okay, so we first started off with our Rouse uh, pizza sauce. I just put a couple tablespoons. You know, this crust has a lot of oil in it. I don't wanna make it more wet by adding too much sauce and you can save on carbs like that. And then I went in with some basil because if we put it on the top, I'm pretty sure it would burn and we wanna avoid that. Next, we went in with a little bit or a lot of cheese, actually. Lots of cheese spreading all over it. We were using a low moisture mozzarella. You could use a fresh mozzarella. We actually thought about that, but we went with the shredded because we have it on hand for our chopples, which if you haven't tried, definitely check out our chopple recipe. And lastly, we went in and put a ton of pepperoni on the top. You could put olives, you could put onion, um, a bunch of different things. We're gonna keep it simple and just use pepperoni as the topping. So now we're gonna put it under the broiler for a couple of minutes on high. I'm gonna keep a close eye on it because I don't want it to like burn and melt all over the place. We just need to melt the cheese and crisp up the pepperoni on top. I didn't think about the parchment paper in, under the broiler. I'm gonna keep an eye on it, but um, maybe don't put parchment paper under the broiler. I'm sure I'm gonna love this angle, but um, because I have the door open and I'm monitoring this thing, the front is not getting melted enough, so I'm gonna actually flip it, uh, the pan around, just so that the uh, front can go to the back and get the same level of meltiness on the top. So here's our first look at it. Oof, for a second, for a second, for a couple seconds. Yeah, that parchment paper is getting brown, so. <laughs> Maybe don't put that in there, I don't know. Maybe it's okay to do it, I don't know. I'm sure you guys will tell me. Ooh. Okay. So I decided to take a look at the back and uh, at the warnings, which I never do. Do not touch parchment paper to open flame. Always preheat conventional oven first. Withstands temperatures up to 425 degrees. It says never use under broiler. So there you go. Do as I say, not as I do. I'm glad that everything turned out okay, but do not use parchment paper under the broiler. I am an idiot. Okay, so our pizza is done. It looks amazing. We're just gonna plate it up and Emily's gonna try it. So Sarah has uh, presented me the finished product to try. I'm really excited. I do appreciate the basil garnish. You're welcome. It smells lovely, fresh from the garden. Sarah has cut this tavern style, which to a lot of people seems really weird, but that's how we cut pizza in Chicago a lot of time. They cut it into like a grid type of easy to grab little slice rather than the big triangles. Honestly, it doesn't matter because you're not gonna be holding this. You're gonna be eating it with a fork and knife. I've had the Illuminati's pizza probably 50 times in my life. And so I'm excited to try Sarah's version. Mmm, it's absolutely delicious. Dare I say more delicious than the Illuminati's one. It's pretty good. It's pretty, it's pretty darn good. You'll see how crispy the outside is. We cook both sides, so both sides are like that. Ollie and Henry want some. Yeah, no. It's absolutely perfect. I would definitely make this again. Sorry. Henry loves pizza. When you say pizza, do you like pizza? Oh, and those for, for those of you who are asking about the carb count of this pizza, the carbs are only gonna come from the mozzarella cheese, but if you shred your own, you'll save on those carbs. And then a tiny bit in the raw sauce. I think there's like three net carbs or something per half cup. And we only used a couple of tablespoons because we don't like that much sauce in our pizza. So basically I would call this carb free, but that's just me. Uh, I would not even bother counting the carbs in this. So you guys thank us sometimes for teaching you something new. And today we learned something new. Don't put parchment paper under the broiler ever. So it says never. It says never. 
never put parchment paper under the broiler. So that's what we learned today. So we're just glad that we could learn together. And while this one was pretty easy, if you would like to see us make an even lazier type of pizza, you can click on the video on the screen and we'll see you over there. Anyway, I'm Emily and Sarah is behind the camera and this is Ali and Henry and we are the Keto Twins signing out. Pizza, 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 pizza.